Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloud Ticket. Today's session, we'll look at integrating Microsoft Sentinel with Defender XDR and looking at some of the unified SOC operations within the Defender portal itself. To navigate to Defender XDR, you need to navigate to security.microsoft.com. And here, you'll very much be used to managing the individual solution areas, whether or not that be uh, Defender for Identity for identifying leak credentials on on premise infrastructure. Securing your endpoints, whether or not that be Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, or Linux. Enacting email security through safe attachments, safe links, anti-spam, anti-malware policies within Defender for Office 365. Or even identifying, assessing, and remediating shadow IT within your business itself. Now, that's great, and that has been great for the past three, five years. Uh, but what we've had is, um, of course, Microsoft Sentinel being a seam solution in Microsoft Azure, where we ingest either native um, or third party telemetry into a single dashboard, which, of course, is then stored in a log, an log analytics workspace. From that perspective, there was then two sided solutions, one being Defender XDR and two being Microsoft Sentinel itself. Microsoft have introduced a unified experience where we can manage both workspaces in a single pane of glass, that being Defender XDR. Now look, let's look at how we can connect both workspaces into Defender XDR and ingest not only our Microsoft native telemetry, but also third party um, uh, data and event logs into Defender XDR itself and some of the management capabilities within there. So first things first, of course, um, you're gonna need a, um, a Sentinel workspace. Um, so what you want to do is navigate to portal.azure.com. This will take you to the Azure management portal. Of course, I need to go through multi-factor authentication uh, with number matching. So I'm going to authenticate myself and of course it will then authorize me to access the given portal. This will then take me to the Azure management portal. Of course, due to time, I've already provisioned a Sentinel workspace. This Sentinel workspace is associated to a log analytics workspace, which is just my data store from that perspective. If I click onto Sentinel, there's a few prereqs we need to configure before we uh, integrate it with Defender XDR. One being we need to um, install from the content hub, the Defender XDR package. So when you come in here, you just wanna type in Defender XDR. And this will list you all the components you could potentially install. For me, I'm looking at Defender XDR. Um, Content Hub is just an evolution of connectors and the fact that not only we're installing the connector now, we're, all inst we're also installing the analytical rules, um, Microsoft Playbooks, um, and um, automation. So if I click in Defender XDR, you can see actually I've already installed all the necessary opponent, opponent, uh, components associated with Defender XDR itself. And of course, I could go over here and I can manage this, this connector um, from here. Now, this is all the analytical rules installed based on me installing uh, Defender XDR from the Content Hub solution area. Uh, so not only is it installed the connector, um, it's also integrated a whole load of analytical rules, which of course will alert me based on um, atypical, atypical behavior, uh, malicious artifacts being detected, um, so on and so forth. Now, what I want to do is I want to come back to the Sentinel workspace and I want to scroll down to data connectors. Here you'll see those connectors I've installed from the Content Hub package, being Defender XDR. And the one I want, one I want to look at is Defender XDR here, and I want to open the connector page. This will load the connector page, which will, of course, run through some uh, prereq checks around um, the workspace, making sure um, I've got the right role-based access control to not only provision, but also administer the Sentinel workspace itself. So I will need um, owner or contributor access over the subscription or at the resource level itself. Um, it's also looking at um, some of the prereqs around licensing, of course, uh, Microsoft um, Sentinel uh, being a, a pay-as-you-go resource. Um, we're only paying for what we consume in regards to data ingestion. Um, the first 90 days of retention is free. And of course, if you opt in into the free trial, um, you get 10 gigabyte per day for free for um, 30 days. 
So we've met all the prereqs from that perspective. Here, we also want to turn off correlation of incidents in Sentinel. Because of course, if we're ingesting the data from Sentinel to Defender XDR, uh, Defender XDR itself has its own correlation um, of machine learning algorithms, which um, correlates all the alerts into incidents and associates them appropriately. So we want to turn that off. I've already turned this off, so I don't have the option to turn it off, but you would have a tick box here to turn it off. Now, if I scroll down further, this is where I start to decipher what logs I want to ingest into Defender XDR, what logs, uh, you know, I'm concerned about. Maybe it is I want to ingest all Defender for Endpoint alerts into Defender XDR. I could do that uh, through a tick box exercise. Um, I've also got Defender for Office 365, Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Identity, and also uh, just general all up Defender alerts. Now, once I've pressed Apply Changes, we're all set up from a Defender XDR integration perspective. Now, I want to go back to my um, Sentinel workspace, and you can see here I've got an incident queue. Now, why are we moving towards the unified SOC experience? Well, typically, if you had several incidents or alerts here, you would see about 40 to 50 alerts, right? And for a SOC analyst to have to, um, you know, drill down into in one those individual alerts and then start to correlate them, that's time consuming. And of course, there's a staggering stat that it takes 48 hours for not only a user, but also an endpoint to be compromised, but six months to not only identify a potential compromise, but also remediate it. So if we can try and reduce that mean time as much as possible, that's only going to help us moving forward. Hence, we're trying to unify the experience. Now, once we set up the Microsoft Sentinel side, and you can see this is called Sentinel Workspace, I want to navigate to Defender XDR. On the left-hand side, you see System, and we want to select Settings. Here, we'll have an option for Sentinel. We want to select Sentinel. And um, this will then give us the option to connect to workspace. OK, um, so any workspaces um, provisioned in Microsoft Azure will appear in this list here. I've got one workspace and this correlates to that workspace I've just provisioned over here. OK, I want to click the box here for the Sentinel workspace. and I want, I want to press connect workspace. That will give you the option then to set that workspace to a primary workspace or a secondary workspace. A primary primary workspace is um, what Defender XDR is going to use to correlate all the alerts, right? The secondary workspace will still ingest um, information into Defender XDR, but not but not typically associate them to an incident. You would have to manually associate them to an incident. However, you're still able to run KQO over the, the workspace, you're still able to receive alerts, but not necessarily correlate those alerts. You'd have to manually correlate them. Now, once we've integrated the Sentinel workspace with Defender XDR, we've then got the art of the impossible within Defender XDR itself. So what does this actually mean from, a, from an admin perspective or a SOC analyst, right? Now, top left here, under investigation response, we've got incidents. In incidents, we've, then got, we've now got a filter for workspaces. I'm now able to filter those siloed workspaces, which were separate isolated environments in my unified Defender XDR portal now. So if I'm concerned um, and I, you know there's an issue what's arose, then I can come in here and click Sentinel Workspace, apply, and I can filter accordingly based on severity of alert, maybe associated tag, incident ID, um, investigation state, whether or not it's a new, in progress, completed alert. Um, we can then manage that moving forward for those siloed workspaces, right? Now, there is a new feature uh, being rele released and being pushed out um, to the wider public um, in the fact that we can now merge inc incidents. At this moment in time, my tenant hasn't got that functionality, uh, but we should be able to tick two incidents and select merge here. That will consolidate both incidents uh, into one. Um, of course, this has all just been consolidated based on AIR algorithms, so automated investigation response at this point in time. But if you did feel that two incidents were associated, uh, but AIR didn't, you know, maybe spot or, or missed, um, you can now merge those accordingly, right? Now, a few other bits on the left-hand side here, if we scroll down, we've got the option for cases. Now, let's say we do have several incidents, okay? Um, some of the hard ask around that is, 
being able to manage that once again from a kind of a single pane of glass point of view. Now we can create what we like to call cases. A case, um, when we go ahead and create a case, um, all, it's, all it asks you to complete is uh, give it a name, uh, whether in what status you want to put the case in, whether it's not as new, open or closed. You've also got the option to create a customized status, so that's totally possible. Um, and the priority, whether or not it's maybe informative, low, medium or high, critical. We can then assign that to an individual, this case, and select a due date of when this should be closed down by at a particular time um, and give it a description. What is this case about? You know, what, what are the details associated to this case? Is it, you know, someone signed in from a malicious IP, someone signed in from a new country, um, someone's device has had some sort of exploit kit or malware installed on it, et cetera, et cetera. We can define it here. Once we've created the case, it will show up in the list here. We can click into the test case. Um, and then you can see that this then acts as if it was a, let's say, a, um, a ticketing tool, right? Where we can add notes uh, for other people to view. Uh, we can change the status. We can change the priority. Not only that, I can link incidents. So if I did have separate incidents in my organization, then I can come in here and select all the incidents I want to link with this particular case and of, of course give people access to this case so that they have an oversight on, on what's going on. I can then unlink if, need, unlink if needs be. I've also got the ability to create tasks, so follow-up actions. Um, actions people need to complete by a particular time and date, a date and time, right? And I can associate that to relevant people internally. Um, so once again, this is a new feature where in which we can manage multiple incidents in uh, one, uh, let's say, workspace. There's SOC optimization here in the fact that it will give you recommendations on how to improve your SOC practice and operate, um, um, make it uh, better in regards to operations. So we can come in here and press view details. Uh, this is looking at service principal signing log data uh, with similar ingestion trends across um, uh, industry profiles, similar to yourself. So different verticals, different industries. And it says, okay, how other organizations are using the service principal signing logs, 35% uh, use it for detection usage, 90% use it for investigation, investigation usage. And of course you can then decide whether or not, you know, um, you've got use cases internally uh, to, to install this particular connector uh, and this particular data set. Um, other than that, uh, we've got the usual solutions, Defender Cloud Apps, Email Collaboration, Identities. Uh, we've then got, of course, the Sentinel tab, which is one of the main main reasons we integrate Sentinel with Defender XDR, where in which we can provision workbooks from Defender XDR itself and also view pre-existing workbooks. Um, hunt across um, different workspaces. So this is really cool in the fact that I can come in here and hunt across different workspaces I integrate with Defender XDR. So let's say I do have multiple customers, right? They have multiple Sentinel instances with multiple workspaces like Log, Log Analytics workspaces. I can hunt across all those in a single pane of glass, right? So not only does this enact single tenant multi workspace management, but we've also got multi tenant multi workspace management as well. And I'm gonna show you that in a second, right? Uh, create notebacks or notebooks for Python. Uh, we've got Intel reports, which have um, recently been renamed. So they've been renamed to Intel reports from uh, um, uh, threat reports, right? Um, content management, we can still content hub, like connectors, analytical rules, uh, playbooks from, from Defender XDR again. And then of course, configuration, where we can install individual data connectors, um, create summary rules, um, automation, lovely. Everything you've got in Sentinel, just is now in Defender XDR, right? Um, other than that, um, like I said, we can go to advanced hunting and we can now um, hunt against multiple workspaces. So this is great in the year of uh, Copilot and the fact that I could run a particular KQL query such as cloud app events, uh, pipeline where action type contains Copilot and raw event data has maybe a sensitive information type you've defined in your business. And then we can find that across multiple tenants and multiple solutions. Now, if I navigate to mto.security.microsoft.com, this will take us to that multi-tenant, multi-workspace management point of view, where I can now 
create a B2B uh, connection between a um, uh, external connection between a external party, a external tenant with my tenant and bring them into my management, my management overview, just like Microsoft or Lighthouse, right? So I can add tenants here if I've got either a GDAP relationship, um, I've established a two-way connection between the two entry ID directories, um, et cetera, et cetera, or I'm using Azure Lighthouse and I can bring them into here, then I can manage their devices at scale, right? Rather than have to delegate my way into their individual tenants on a one-to-one -one basis. And then I can group those tenants and once again, filter those tenants accordingly through here. So not only do I have a single tenant multi-workspace um, uh, visibility, I now have multi-tenant multi-workspace visibility over multiple tenants. So that was a quick video on not only connecting um, Sentinel with Defender XDR, but um, some of the use cases in Defender XDR itself. Of course, this was just a uncut video of me walking through the Defender XDR portal. If you need any more advice or assistance, please reach out to me on a one-to-one -on -one basis. No problem. Thank you very much.